All right, hey guys, um, we are going to be talking about Clone Wars Episode 9 uh, of Season 7 called Old Friends Not Forgotten this week. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, we were originally going to do a four, uh, like we did uh, previously, uh, the four episode arcs. Uh, but this episode basically was so good, we're just going to jump right in. So uh, we'll be right back after this. Monkey. McClunky. <laughs> At the Cantina Club. All right, and we are back and ready to jump into episode nine on season seven of the Clone Wars. So, initial thoughts, Greedo. Uh, what are your initial thoughts on Old Friends Not Forgotten? Well, I almost wanted you to go first, but my my initial thoughts uh, were very cinematic. Um, it, it, it instantly from the beginning you knew this was different than the episodes prior uh they put a they put the lucasfilm the intro old school lucasfilm <laughs> it, it that was so amazing you're watching it with the lights down and you're yes. just seeing it in cinema or something they did it like this seems like the first half of a movie you know yeah, and, and i'm amazing. expecting the yeah. second half of the movie next plus it was a longer episode and that yeah, was my other thought was, it was like yeah, as it was going on, I was like, oh, man, this is great. I don't want it to end. And then I would yeah. look, and it's like, it's going on and on. It's continuing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, my complaints about the batch of episodes before this was it wasn't cinematic enough for me, and there wasn't enough drama. I even mentioned that the character entrances and moments where they make decisions weren't handled with um, any kind of gravity. And this instantly went the other way. Uh, the character intros, like Obi-Wan's intro, is very in your face and cinematic in a big moment. Anakin's intro is a big moment. It's almost like this was the first episode in a way. You were reintroducing right. these characters and seeing them right. again for the first time. And it's yeah, almost it really put was. in there as fan service. So everybody watching it together can cheer, you know, when Obi-Wan shows up. Um, yeah. So my initial thoughts were, uh, just to keep the initial shot thought short, cinematic, big, fun, and just great. I mean, I, I, it was, I have a couple of uh, complaints that we'll get to that, you will, you know, sure. <laughs> very petty type sure, things. Sure. Very same here, same here. <laughs> to complain about. But overall, uh, so much was addressed here that I was complaining about before that I can't, I have to say, well done. You know, I mean, it was really well done and reminded mm -hmm. me of kind of the old days. Yeah. Okay. Good to see. Yeah, I mean, I have to agree with you. I, I was I, I was really enthralled from the first moment. Like I said, you knew something different was happening when the old school Lucasfilm logo comes up. Um, and then they go into John Williams' score and not, you yeah. know, Kevin, not Kevin Kinder's that was score. Another no, thing, no. I, I, was, uh -huh. I was wondering about that as it went in. I was like, is there a lot of the Star Wars theme happening here? And isn't that unusual? You can tell me because... The yeah, regular no, Clone Wars, that's not the purpose. They thing. never did. They've never used John Williams' score before. That was the first time. Um, it's wow, Kevin Kiner. Yeah. Kevin Kiner uh, scored this as well as Rebels. Um, and he's he's done all of it. And I love his work. I think he did an amazing job with Clone Wars. But yeah, just to hear the original John Williams you know, theme coming out with the Clone Wars logo, kind of like, oh man, this is this is something different now. <laughs> you know, It's definitely set the stage for yeah. For what we when got. the clones attacked from the bridge, when Anakin showed up, you got the full Star Wars theme during that whole sequence too. Right, right. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. I, I thought it was really well done. I, I I really enjoyed the episode. Like you said, I've got a couple of nitpicky things to get to at the end, but I I loved it. It was one of my favorite episodes. You know, I've already watched it four times this week. Um, I really enjoyed it. And like I said, kind of like you, I, I I it kept going and going, and I like you didn't want it to end. And I finally paused it at one point. I was like, oh man, it things run in thirty minutes. You know, because the standard episodes run like twenty three to twenty five. You know, so they added like seven to seven to five minutes. Uh, 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 additional footage on there. So I'm hoping maybe they keep that trend going with all four episodes. That'd be because basically so you'd, end up that, like a, you'd end up with a two hour movie, you know? Is that what it was by the end? Was it about 30 minutes? I thought it was longer. Yeah, than, yeah. I thought it was about 45. No, no, it was, no, 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 it was 30. It was 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And like I said, the standard episodes run 20, 23 to 25 minutes, and this one ran sure. 30. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, loved it. Uh, I loved everything about it. And obviously, we'll get into details here in a second. But you're right. I think you summed it up best with the cinematic feel. Uh, it felt like you know it was just it had these these impactful moments that the last story arc 
did not have. Um, yeah. and, and especially, obviously, we're dealing now with all the main characters and, and a main storyline, not, not a side story with one main character and, and a bunch of new characters we've never, you know, we have no compassion for, basically, because we don't know them yet. Um, right. But, yeah, I know I love the, the reveals. That was the reason for the title, I think. Old yeah, friends not yeah. forgotten. Like exactly. it, it, they realize it's kind of a tip of the cap to the fans that have kept this desire alive to see more Clone Wars and more of these characters over the ten years or whatever that's mm-hmm. been off the air, and um, and saying we're going to revisit the characters you love at this point. It, it, yeah, it was yeah. Title really played in well with that. Sure. I'm sorry to interrupt and- you. <laughs> no, not at all. And, um, but I love, like you said, the cinematic uh, entrances of everybody. It was very dramatic, especially Obi Wan's. That was just great. You know, I just, I love just the way they had him looking to the side at the camera like that. You know, it was just <laughs> and that look on his face. That was just like, oh, I was immediately enthralled into the episode. You know, I was like, yes, Clone Wars is back <laughs> after a four catch, episode. Uh, did you catch the irony that it, I think, if I'm right, that it was Cody he saved there? Mm-hmm. The one it who was Cody. ends up betraying him, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was Cody. That was interesting, yeah, because it was Re- Rex was the one that was under the bridge, uh, with the guys flying mm. out on the side. Um, but anyway, so yeah, those are my initial thoughts. Loved it, absolutely loved it. Uh, it obviously, by far and away, the best episode of the season so far, and, and easily in the top, uh, top echelon of episodes all time at this point already. Um, so let's get into some details and, uh, basically, yeah, the, 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 the whole episode kind of starts with this battle on this bridge. And I got to tell you, I don't know if you took this away from it at all. The whole time I'm watching this battle, I feel like they're fighting on the Golden Gate Bridge. I <laughs> know I didn't think that way. Because it for, okay, hear me out. If you watch it again, think about that. Because it looks like the Golden Gate Bridge it had the long <laughs> spire, you know, like that. And keep it. And if you look in the background, all the the hills and the green hills look just like they do at the at at you know the Golden uh-huh. Gate Bridge. And Lucasfilm Limited is actually literally a stone's throw from there. You literally look out the windows of Lucasfilm and you see the Golden Gate Bridge. So I bet you anything, you it was go. probably yeah. it was probably a nod to that. Yeah, you know, there was, it was cool they put it on a bridge. I mean, it, yeah. it was probably a set piece they had in mind for a long time. Um, I don't understand why Obi-Wan was so clueless about what the strategy was going to be that all these clones <laughs> were under the bridge. Nobody bothered to tell Obi-Wan, so he just ends up looking kind of like, you know, Obi-Wan. But uh, um, <laughs> I liked that R2 was in there, and R2 had a yeah. little part to play. It was cool oh, yeah, seeing yeah. him, and Mm-hmm. Again, what struck me in that sequence uh, was their use of the Star Wars theme. I, I was a little weirded out. It was like, am I watching? It was it was very prequel like um, having the Star Wars theme playing while Anakin's mm-hmm. doing something heroic and the clones mm-hmm. are attacking and that. and uh, you see R two and everything. Right. Um, interesting choice on their part, you know. And I, I felt like they were just going for it, just saying like we're going to do some of the things we've always wanted to do. Uh, this is our last hurrah, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. I also noticed, uh, what do you think about this? Uh, I saw an interview with Filoni where he talked about the changes they've done in the facial animations. Mm-hmm. And he, he said years ago when they concluded the show, they hadn't gotten to the point where they could animate the faces and move them and the robes and things like they're doing now. And he was appreciative of the fact that the you know, animation is advanced to where they can do it with, you know, in their budget and with the technology and everything. Uh, I noticed that immediately. The faces were more animated, had more expressiveness, and everything. What did right. you did you notice that, and what did you think about it? Yeah, no, I definitely noticed it, and I liked it. That's one thing about the Clone Wars is it's evolved as it's gone on. Uh, if you go back and watch season one, obviously it looks very stiff, um, yeah. almost wooden in a lot of ways, and even the even the the, the movements of the human characters are even more robotic sometimes. You know, um, yeah. still look good, but it's nothing like what they've got now. Um, but yeah, I kind of expected that honestly because every season has seemed to progress uh, with Clone Wars. You know, even even you, know, you compare season five to season two, you're going to see a, a difference. Um, but yeah, I, I thought it was good because yeah, now you got a lot of you know hair blowing and robes you know yeah. moving in the breeze and stuff that you would have never gotten you know in previous seasons. So yeah, it's it's definitely obvious that the the animation has has evolved. Uh, but I liked it. It didn't take away from it to me. Um, I thought I just I, I, I'm so used to them evolving that I'm just used to seeing what the next phase is going to look like. So yeah, I noticed yeah. I, I, I noticed it and enjoyed it. Yeah, I noticed it. And I, yeah, it took me a little while to get used to it. I, I had a little mm-hmm. bit of a reaction to it like I did when I first saw Clone Wars. 
in, in, in a, a slight uncanny valley type thing where I was like, I don't know. It, it was a little unsettling. Like I'm not, I got used to the old Clone Wars style and then they change it, which is fine. But as a viewer, I was a little hampered by my past experience where I was like, Ooh, that doesn't quite look like Anakin. Or that doesn't quite look like Obi-Wan. Um, mm-hmm. and, and the fact that it's still so computer generated and everything kind of gave me that uncanny valley thing a little bit. But as I watched it and went on, um, I thought it got better. I just, Anakin's character design, especially just left me a little, I don't know, just a, a little bit out of pocket, like, like from what I remember him being, you know? Okay. So, but the was yeah. there and the action was there. So, uh, of the character was there. So, I, I ended up being able to, you know, handle it just fine. Mm-hmm. But it just, at first, I was like, I don't know if I like this or not. But then I, yeah. then I gave it, if they did two more seasons, I wouldn't even, you know, after a couple episodes, I wouldn't even notice it anymore. But, sure. But yeah. uh, I'd probably prefer it. Uh, mm-hmm. But I'm kind of a creature of habit. <laughs> so, <laughs> but um, I did notice the fluidity of motion, especially with Ahsoka and mm-hmm. some of the battle sequences and when she's moving with the lightsabers and everything, mm-hmm. that it was uh, much more uh, uh, just fluid with the motions, yeah. and much more like battle play or more natural. Um, and that, so the, the first sequence was that on the bridge. Uh, which kind of established again that Anakin's a badass at this point, <laughs> and yeah. the clones and the Jedi are in sync. Um, you know, Obi Wan's still just kind of himself, uh, and a, you know, the true Jedi of the Order. Then we bring uh, Ahsoka back into the mix with mm-hmm. um, Katan. and at right. that point, I felt like this became more Ahsoka's episode and more of a love letter to Ahsoka fans, even yeah. to the point of her uniting with Rex and the clones where they paint their helmets with her yeah. uh, that was a great yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and uh, from that point on I felt like she took over the episode and I really felt like it was Ahsoka again I uh, I thought this is where she should have gone from the yeah. last time we saw her instead of reverting back to a little kid kind of like she did in the last mm-hmm. four episodes story arc um, yeah she, she was she, they had her standing different they had her with a with a, you know, she was self-possessed. She mm-hmm. knew the right thing to do. She was, um, she was coming into her own, and uh, sure. I appreciate that a lot more than what we saw in the last four episodes. That was, this stuff was okay, but this yeah. is what I expected to see, and uh, right. and it was good. What did you think? Yeah. You're a big Ahsoka fan. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, she's one of those characters that has really I've gone 180 degrees on. You know, from the initial Clone Wars movie where I just couldn't stand this. <laughs> little complaining obnoxious character like who is this character this is awful you know to where i'm like now i'm just a huge fan of the character i love the fact that they gave her character development and and, a, and an arc that shows her maturing and not only physically because they show her because if you go back and look at season one she looks like a little bitty kid almost you know and yeah. even her i don't know what you call the head things that they have but they're much smaller and shorter and yeah. you know now she's older so the other longer you know just like it would be you know so they've actually you know aged the character physically as well as emotionally uh and it shows so i really like i really really like the character now my only complaint about the 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 lineup with the 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 helmets painted is that they already showed us that in the preview you know it's like that would that would have been such a moment i think to to just reveal it in the show itself you know Mm -hmm. that that would that was almost like a tear-up moment you know uh but yeah yeah, because you know because um yeah yeah, they showed it back on i think it was one of the original trailers they showed when they first announced that clone wars was going to be coming back that was one of the scenes they showed was just her the the door opening and all the clone troopers standing there with their helmets painted so they showed a little snippet of that so you already kind of knew that was coming but I uh, I wasn't anticipating that. I I did see that clip earlier, uh, way earlier, and I kind of had forgotten about it, and so I wasn't expecting that scene at that point. So it still took me, you know, pleasantly by surprise and achieved what right. it was going for. I think, and um, also Anakin giving her the lightsabers was really cool. That uh, was great. Moment. Yeah, I really enjoyed and that. That's that's what he's. Unlike you, I didn't watch the movie first, and I didn't start with the early episodes of Clone Wars. I kind of skipped a little more. Like, I mm-hmm. saw that the first ones weren't going to be to my taste, so I skipped ahead a little bit when I first started watching it. So Ahsoka wasn't such an annoying character to me to begin with, yeah. so I always liked her. Um, I got right. to know her more from the middle of her arc, and then I could go sure. back and watch the Yeah, it's um, a different perspective. So one of the reasons I really appreciate her is because uh, it's another relationship for Anakin to have. In the movies, there's really only um, Padme and Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan. 
Yeah. And that that's pretty much it. And then the and then the kind of distant relationship with the Jedi Council and stuff. And of right. course there's cit- cities. But this mm-hmm. gave us another side of Anakin where he's mm-hmm. tasked with uh being the master to somebody and bringing somebody along and giving them guidance and everything. And um they have a real bond at, mm-hmm. which you see played out in Rebel as well. Yeah. And uh I really like that story and that Anakin thus Vader has another human connection you know, personal connection that we get to explore. And uh, mm-hmm. I think that's significant. That's another reason why I like her character. So, yeah, I mean, honestly, in this, you know, if you really think about this episode and that scene in particular that we're talking about uh, at the conclusion of that scene, um, you know, he gives her the lightsabers after the, the klaxon, you know, alarms are going off uh, and they're, they're figuring out, you know, that uh, um, Coruscant's being attacked and all that. Um, well, first of all, let me say about Obi Wan. Uh, th- that was almost my favorite line in the entire episode. Was just when he said, "You know, I killed Maul once. It's better to capture him. He doesn't seem to stay dead." I just, I love that. That was just per- that. Was, that also, like, kind of, like, kind of like you said, that was very cinematic. I thought, you know, that's something I would expect to see in a Star Wars movie. That dialogue like that, you know, that was really good. Um, but no, getting back to my point, so then she says goodbye to Anakin, and I'm guessing that's the last time she sees him. That's what I was just thinking, yeah. Un- until, until he's, you know, she faces him as Vader in Rebels, you know. Yeah. Um, kind yeah, of paused I, there for a second and made that moment right. seem like it was going to be important. And so, yeah, that was the natural conclusion. Yeah, as I was about. watching it, it hit me. I was they're, like, I they're, going off to, they're going off to, to get separate tangled places. In. Yeah, they're, they're going off to yeah. separate battles here, yeah, and, and that's where it ends, you know, so... Yeah, that's yeah, that that's kind of kind of interesting. But uh, and last time she sees Obi Wan too, I guess until until Rebels. But um, anyway, so uh, yeah, I love that whole scene with the uh, sort of honoring Ahsoka and Rex, you know, with the painted helmet and all that. I thought that was really well done, really really cool. Um, so yeah, so obviously we go from there to um, this. Basically, we officially start the siege of Mandalore with Bo-Katan, who is ultimately attempting to take back Mandalore from uh, the control of Darth Maul, who's basically using the, uh, and I forget the name, but the, uh, the the Mandalorian president at this point, he's basically using him as, as a puppet uh, to control what's going on in Mandalore. So they're going to try, you know, she had to make this pact with, um, with the Republic to get enough forces to actually have a siege because she didn't have enough people. So that's basically where we lead then. And I got to tell you, you know, so, so they're, you know, so I guess the next scene is, you know, we're, we're flying in and the attack starts and, um, I just, I just love. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm gonna be like totally fanboy on this episode, but <laughs> I'm just gonna right. tell you, it's so awesome. But that whole thing of her getting from the ship to the platform yeah. was so badass. <laughs> it was right. so cool. The way they did, it, especially yeah. the final jump when she landed and stopped herself, used her lightsabers as brakes. Oh yeah, I know. that was that. awesome. Wasn't it? And then, and then the way they had the camera pan up with the explosion going off behind her was, you know, obviously very set up, cinematic and dramatic. But it was just. I was like wow every time i've seen that i've gone i think i've actually said wow out loud every time i've watched it like wow that was well done um but yeah that was that was really cool i mean i'm literally getting goosebumps <laughs> <laughs> and then all the mandalorians landing on the platform behind her and then the clones yeah. coming in and the, exactly. and the bad guys were like it's time to go <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, we gotta go take her down. she was blocking everything they sent at her and so when the reinforcements arrived they went okay fall back <laughs> yeah, fall back <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> right. yeah exactly that you also got to see in that whole battle her style her battle style is something different uh, than we've right. seen before uh, from the jedi she has her own thing going which um jedi's fighting style says a lot about them and everything and i, I really i thought that was great the fact that and she always had one shorter than the other on the sabers, or is that a new thing? I always thought they were the same length. I always thought they were the same length, too. I'd actually have to go back and research, because I was wondering about that. I meant to look that up. Didn't Anakin say, didn't Anakin say uh, these are better than the originals or something, or modified yeah. them or something? Well, he said, like, he he said that, but I kind of thought, yeah, and I kind of, I don't know why I thought this, but I kind of thought he was referring to the color, because, you know, she always had green sabers, and now they're blue. Uh-huh. Okay. So I don't know if you just replaced the pistol yeah. or whatever. You know, that's kind of the way I initially initially took it, but maybe it is the yeah. length because I don't recall the length of her sabers being different lengths before a long and a short one. But, but, but uh, yeah, let's let's be honest. That whole sequence was completely badass. Yeah. And, uh, 
it was as soon as they start going down and the uh, missiles or any aircraft start coming in and the ships are exploding around them. It was like you said when you you told me a messenger Clone Wars is back with a vengeance. That yeah. was my thought. It was like, hey, we've got pilots being blown up in flames, you know, again. <laughs> we've got people getting knocked out of the ships and their jetpacks yeah. being cut, fly off and spiral yeah, and die. Flying off to the yeah, disc. There was, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there, was no, there was no flinching from the war. No, the, total the carnage. Disaster. Yeah. Wars. Yeah. Right, yeah, this, like this wasn't Rebels where everybody just gets plan. stunned, you know. <laughs> no, yeah. no. It's the, the, the stakes are for real, you know, and uh, I loved that. Uh, that was amazing. And the way that the, the Mandalorian, the bad guys, the man, bad Mandalorians, Death Watcher, who, whatever they call themselves, the Maul Delorians. They did a really, I thought they did a really good job mounting that offensive defense that they did where they landed in the ships and were just taking people out and knocking them out and and really you thought they might have a chance there for a minute and uh that that made it very interesting and seeing the mandalorians fighting each other in the air and on ships and everything that was really cool and uh i love the design of the maldalorians <laughs> the mandalorian armor with the sith paintings right with the, sort of the sith paintings on the helmets yeah exactly. yeah yeah and that stuff's just cool it's fun why wouldn't yeah. you do that you know if you were one of right. Maul's minions exactly you have to, right? <laughs> so and it also brought into they obviously have brought this thing of ahsoka's colors and maul's colors and, mm -hmm. and suddenly we have these two um color palettes one yeah. representing balance good and one representing just fury and revenge and evil are going to come into conflict even though you may not have expected that you don't see ahsoka right. and all as neutral combatants but that's the situation we're in now uh and i wanted to mention before i thought it was cool that they put rex and ahsoka together and put rex in charge of his own 501st whatever mm -hmm. it was division agent um yeah. this explains a lot about why he's not in revenge of the sith and why right. uh, he survived probably, mm -hmm. uh, and didn't turn on the Jedi because he's not in the middle of this mix for Order 66. Right. Um, and we, we have yet to see what's going to happen with that. We may not see it, but all we know is from Rebels, he said, me and my command did not turn on our Jedi. And exactly. um, at this point, their Jedi is Ahsoka, and it's pretty cool. That we can assume they didn't turn on her. So yeah, um, I, do have, I do have one question before we go sure. forward from here that I didn't understand, and you would probably mm -hmm. know this. Um, I thought Ahsoka was a fugitive the last time we saw her from the Jedi Council. Like they were well, trying she to was, grab her. She, she was. Yeah, they were actually trying to capture her. Um, so yeah, why, that, that, why would they that is a little her at this bit point? of exactly. That's a little bit of a plot hole, I think. Uh, I think because they're just dealing with limited time here, they can't really explore that. Maybe I don't know. Now keep in mind. Um, Anakin, of course, you know, being the rebel he is, he was always on her side anyway. He was never sure. going to yeah. apprehend her. But obviously, Obi Wan is, you know, certainly more of the 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 straight and narrow Jedi path guy, you know, uh, and yeah. do what the Council says kind of thing. So yeah, it does seem like he would probably the first thing he would probably do is, okay, you're under arrest, you know. Um, well, but I, yeah, I just thought it was interesting that there didn't seem to be a discussion of it because it's almost I felt like I missed something. I thought maybe you would know knowing the series better than I do if I did miss something, if there was something right. after that. And that if I addressed... did miss something too, I apologize, but I don't think so. Um, okay. Because, yeah, I, I remember one of those last times you ever saw her was literally her just literally leaving and running away right. after just evading capture, you know, from several well, Jedi. Well, she went down into pursuing... Coruscant, and, mm -hmm. and in these last episodes, she went down into Coruscant to try to evade the people mm -hmm. on the upper levels, I thought. So I thought she was still a fugitive. But I guess we can assume that she's under the protection of Bo Katan and that group. So maybe they're so, gonna have yeah. to ask them to take her back. Plus sure. she's coming to them with Maul, and we're supposed to assume that maybe the Jedi are like, look, we have a greater issue here than a fugitive yeah. Jedi. We have a true, you know, like a yeah, Sith Lord we have to take care of. It's more important team. that we that she's we capture a Sith Lord. Yeah. yeah. It's more important to capture yeah. a Sith Lord than to arrest our fugitive Jedi. Yeah. Exactly. But I do think I do think you kind of overlook it because it was so long manic. And they're like and they're just they know they're not gonna mess with it. But to put her as an advisor with a with a division under mm -hmm. Rex it seemed a little bit of a stretch without explaining it, but uh, but I don't really care because I'd rather see the action than have an explanation. Oh yeah, but absolutely. Then have them nice around, talk about Jedi. it. It yeah. would be nice for the Jedi to admit they're wrong for once, you know, mm -hmm. rather than just take yeah. advantage of the situation presented to them. Right. Exactly. Uh, not not necessarily Obi Wan or Anakin, but the Jedi Council itself. Yeah. 
Uh, so anyway, that was my only question. But moving forward, uh, they get to the city in the Mandalorian city, and um, Bo Katan. They have a fight that's really cool. Uh, Bo Katan and her people go after the prime minister, right? And Ahsoka and what was his name? Um, the, the clone commander that was new. It was like uh, trying to remember his name, but he was a new character. Like it was, it was oh, a, I... the clone commander went with her. That he was the one that ended up getting killed. Oh, and she yeah, him. yeah, 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 yeah. What was his name? Was um, like, let me see if I can see it here. Or something. <laughs> But uh, anyway, they split up, mm. and mm-hmm. Tan and her people go after the prime minister, and um, and uh, Ahsoka and her troops, some of her troops, decide to go split up and all start looking for signs of Maul. They get called mm-hmm. down to like the sewer system or something, and they point yeah. out one of the uh, Death Watch people or one of Maul's people retreated into the. It was, Gar- it was one of Maul's main. Yeah. Gar Saxon is yeah. his name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, anyway, that and that's, that sets up the next and kind of concluding action in the episode, right? Um, Which it was the you know that was telegraphed a mile away that that was a trap, you know. Even sure. though they, they yeah, described it, it all, he just he took off. <laughs> he seemed like he was in a really big hurry. I'm like, yeah. And then they're immediately there's trepidation. You know, they're immediately like, hmm. Well, what's down there? You know, <laughs> and the way they're looking, <laughs> it's like, uh, should we? I don't know. You know, but uh, yeah. So you knew it was going to be a trap. But yeah, so they end up going in there, of course. And meanwhile, like you said, up in the throne room, um, Bo-Katan realizes that it's a trap because uh, the prime minister tells her you were supposed to bring the Jedi, but you brought the wrong one. You know, because obviously Maul wants Obi Wan. He wants revenge on Obi Wan, and they brought you know uh, Ahsoka. So that's when she realizes, ah, this is a trap. Tries to get her, but of course they're under the, you know, the sewer system. They not getting any any communication, so they hear nothing. And they basically, yeah, they go into the tunnels. Um, unfortunately, most of her uh, squad gets gets destroyed and killed um, while she's in there with them, and uh, and she's basically stuck in the middle at one point with basically surrounded by guns. And then of course the final. Thing that happens is we see Maul walking through the shadows down one of the tunnels and he stops, you know, with that, you know, great, you know, comment at the end. It's like, I was hoping for Kenobi. Why are you here? Yeah, that was such a great last line, I thought. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was, <laughs> that was really cool. That's really setting up an interesting, uh, interesting finale to the series, I think. Yeah. And it's a shame that clone troopers were kind of inexperienced or whatever they were and eager didn't listen to her because they ran right into the trap. And got, yeah, they did. She kept telling them to stop and they would run right into, <laughs> yeah. into danger and get mowed down. Yeah. I thought it was almost more frightening to see the trap waiting for them and then to hear it without seeing what happened. That was a cool less is more moment there. After all the kind of we right. seeing so much, we were seeing so much stuff through the whole episode that they kind of used a little more suspense there uh, and let you imagine what happened there. And mm-hmm. that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. I will. I do have one more question. Um, sure. The last time I remember seeing Maul in this timeline was when Sidious showed up and took out uh, Darth uh, Savage or whatever his name was. Yeah, his Savage brother. Press. Savage Press. And, yeah, Savage Press. He took him out, killed him, and then subdued Maul. And he said, please, Master, don't kill me. And he said, oh, I'm not going to kill you. Uh, and I don't remember what he said to him, but uh, is that isn't that the last time we saw Maul in this timeline? And, no. and so is this another no? So he no because Maul because this is that that all predates the uh, him going to Mandalore, and 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 taking the prime ministers. Of, what's that? I thought that was at the end of the Mandalore arc. Hmm. I thought it was after it was. Murdered, uh, the Duchess. And then, uh, oh, okay. Well, if and, it was, yeah, because if it was after he murdered the Duchess, because that was the that was the Mandalore arc, you're right. All right, let me I, see. I'm not sure, that's why I'm asking you. <laughs> no, I'm looking, but yeah, the last time I'm actually looking at a uh, about, at a timeline last here. Last time I remember seeing about Maul was, was Sidious taking basically whipping his ass on Mandalore. Sidious came to Mandalore mm-hmm. and whooped, whooped him and Savage Oppressor's at killed his brother, whooped him. This is what I thought, anyway, and then. The next time I heard from him was in Rebels. And then the next time, uh, or time before that, would have been Solo. It would have been Solo and then Rebels, I think. And then Rebels, yeah. So I'm wondering... How did he yeah, go? No, from you're right. Being... I'm looking at I'm looking at the episode guide here, and you're right um, because this happens at the end of season five. 
Okay. Uh, the 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 storyline you're talking about with Sidious um, taking out uh, Savage Press and and kind of you know bringing Maul to heel. Um, yeah, that was in episode 16 of uh, of season five. Uh, and then they finished up the season there with the end of the Mandalore arc. And then, of course, season six was the Lost Missions, which was just a few, you know, 13 unfinished episodes that right. they finally finished and put together as a, as a, as a, what they thought at that time was going to be the final season. And now he's back, obviously, with the actual final season. So, yeah, I don't know. That may be another thing that they just have yet to explain. Or explain. maybe that's maybe it's it was, the- you don't know, Sidious who unleashed him back to yeah. Mandalore and said, OK, go control them, you know. Yeah, it seems like he went right back to where he was before mm-hmm. the end of that, kind of in a way, like being in charge of Mandalore with that same uh, administrator or whatever, prime minister as his puppet. Yeah. I think. So, yeah, I, I'm a little unclear on that. I'd like to know. Yeah, it seems weird that they removed him and then suddenly he's back. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I mean, time has passed and we're, we're not going to get, obviously, they, they've decided not to give us a blow by blow, you know, yeah, here's what happened. Got there. And, right. Especially yeah, because we're dealing uh, with 12 episodes and not like 20 plus, you know, like right. we were used to getting. Yep. And we'll probably get a comic or something that explains it sure, all. Sure, yeah, all that stuff will explain <laughs> it, yeah. <laughs> I think there's yeah. even talk about our small series or something, and maybe they'll explain it there. But that um, be, Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, so uh, anything else you want to say about it? the episode ended there, a great cliffhanger. We're obviously going to get a duel or something at some sure point. yeah yeah obviously uh, we're gonna get a get a, a duel between ahsoka and maul and i don't know if the, the the remaining episodes are just gonna be focused on mandalore or if we'll I get think so. free binge of the sith action or, or that's not. what i'm wondering yeah that's what that's what i'm wondering because i mean we may have seen the last of obi-wan and anakin in the series if it stays at mandalore because they don't go to mandalore mm-hmm. so that'll be interesting to see but um but yeah, either way, that's 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 a heck of a start to the final you know story arc here. Uh, really, yeah, really, home, really a big home run there for the first episode. So I'm hoping the other three live up to the uh, to the hype. <laughs> but I, I think they probably will. I, I I trust Dave Filoni better than anybody in the world of Star Wars. I think <laughs> <laughs> I think he gets it better than anybody. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. I uh, I still think there's somebody out there. Um, it, it may be sacrilege to say, but I, I still think there's somebody out there that will come along and capture the Star Wars spirit that I am more attuned to, um, which mm-hmm. is less the pre- prequel spirit and more the original trilogy spirit uh, right. and more the uh, more the samurai spirit, things like that. Um, to me, Filoni captures the balance between all those things, mm-hmm. but he, he maybe leans a little towards the prequel. Uh, no, he definitely does because that's that's, that's paper, usually the yeah. area he's worked in the most. So yeah, he's definitely right. is 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 attuned to I that. Have no trouble, I have no trouble identifying his work with the prequels mentality yeah. and setting, feeling, sure. and everything at all. So yeah, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's amazing. But yeah, overall, I've loved the episode. Absolute home run. I'm definitely looking forward to to episode uh, ten now. Okay, I'm right there with you. We're, yeah. we're doing good on time, I think. We're not going to stretch this out, but I do want to say, let's get to the nitpicks. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So you, you go ahead. Go ahead. What, what do you I'm got? I'm Frito. I have to bring stuff up. Um, <laughs> you have to start. All right. All right, I'm going to try to summarize this and make it quick. Um, the, the overall feel of this whole thing to me was very, very prequel-ish. Uh, to me, that's overall not the best thing. I, I don't hate the prequels anymore. I don't have a big axe to grind about them, but I don't prefer that tone that much. Uh, and this struck me as very much in the tone of the prequels, only it brought in the still lighthearted side of Anakin and Obi-Wan and their camaraderie to where there was absolutely no threat, no dissension between them whatsoever. Um, but the action and everything and the and the outlook on the galaxy kind of stuff was very prequelish, you know, and so that's not my preferred thing. Also, um, I thought the the action was tended more towards the rebels side of things, which is uh, for our main characters there was no risk whatsoever. And I understand <laughs> we know these main characters make it out. Every single antagonist and protagonist exactly. in this thing is going to live. We know we've seen them in the live. future. Yeah. We know that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that doesn't mean they, that doesn't mean they couldn't go through something awful or the or the or the. Sure. Uh, 
you know, the, you know um, stakes could still be high. So, but but I really felt like Anakin, Obi Wan, and Ahsoka, especially, were just bulletproof, and we're really doing the kind of thing like from Attack of the Clones when Anakin just falls out of a speeder in midair, and Obi Wan goes, "Oh, I hate when he does that." Well, I hate when he does it too. <laughs> okay, for my own reason. Yeah. I felt like he did it, and Ahsoka did it really bad. You know, they were just mm -hmm. the, the action was too much. I know you loved that sequence where she got from the transport to the platform, and it was great. Um, yeah. But it stretched belief beyond. I mean, I would prefer. I know it's a cartoon. I mean, I, please don't get on me, yeah. but the up yeah. there. But I would prefer just a little more realism that I can accept without without you know hit me in the face that this is a cartoon. Just give me uh, the Jedi aren't superheroes, okay? And no, um, the pre prequels pushed them in that direction quite a bit, and this pushed them in that direction quite a bit. So it, 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 to me, it blurred the line a little between fan service and what I actually want to see. And I would have liked to have seen something a little more grounded where, you know, she takes a laser burn to the arm or something, or the explosion knocks her winded, you know, anything besides yeah, the, yeah, yeah. she sticks something to show sticks that you're landing human. every single time. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the fact that she saved the clone in the cockpit and he ejected out. He said, thanks, Commander, or whatever. But the right. fact that she rode the thing into, or, or, I mean, to just ultimately, that's her death, right? Plus, yeah. the people waited for her seeing this thing coming in that was going to crash on them. It's like they all knew they were going to make it. You know, it was a little, it was a little much. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then, my other complaint, okay? Uh, and there's two more, real quickly. Um, I feel like we're repeating ground here. Which I understand this is the end and they're they're doing the greatest hits or something. Well, I'm not sure what they're doing yet. But Maul versus Obi-Wan, Maul and Mandalore, um, this has already been done. I, I, and I don't understand exactly why we're retreading the same ground yet. It was mm -hmm. very cool, very cinematic, cinematic and fun. I really don't have a problem with it. I'm on board. But it did feel a little repetitive. Like, Maul again with a trap? You know, didn't Maul do this five times already? Kill innocent mm -hmm. people to draw in Obi-Wan or whatever? Um, right. I mean... There's nothing shocking here whatsoever, and I would have appreciated some kind of twist, maybe. I don't know what, but something a little more twisty than just Maul going, being disappointed that, Obi again, Obi-Wan didn't show up. Um, and my last complaint, whatever you want to call it, nitpick, is mm -hmm. that I don't see this Anakin from this part of the Clone Wars as our Anakin from Revenge of the Sith, and I'm still a movie guy first. I feel like these are two separate characters. Um, two separate characters. <laughs> and... I'm not sure how to uh, um, how to uh, just reconcile those two characters together because yeah. one is supremely confident, very lighthearted, confident they're going to win. He doesn't seem war weary at all. Um, the one in Revenge of the Sith seems reserved, guarded, paranoid, uh, injured. You know, I mean, psycho yeah. psychologically and physically injured. Absolutely. Um, shaken, shaken. You know, his face seems shaken. Uh, and he's and he's marked by disappointment as much mm -hmm. as anything else, uh, sure. which can continue to be a theme through the movie, which drives into the dark side. This Anakin seemed disappointed by nothing. Like he's he's supremely mm -hmm. confident that everything will work out. Yeah, I mean, he was really like a superhero. He was Captain America in this. So mm -hmm. no, he um, really was. You're right. That's a really good point. So I understand we're only seeing one side of it, and he might yeah. be showing this face to Ahsoka and everything, and to the troops. But um, I just don't feel like it's the same guy. It, 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 and it could be the Clone Wars Anakin. He's been a very established good character on his own. But I would like mm -hmm. to. I would like to have seen a. Maybe I'll still get that. But I don't mm -hmm. think so. That's my four kind yeah. of. Things. Sure. Um, yeah. My only. Um... Let me think. I'm trying to act. I'm actually drawing a blank on my my nitpicks. <laughs> um, but <laughs> just love there it. Was... But. <laughs> no, I really did, but I was actually thinking about them earlier because I knew we were going to do this. Um, <sighs> wow. Yeah, they're gone. <laughs> Seriously, I don't know. <laughs> I guess maybe I'll remember them for next episode and I'll, uh, we'll do an aside. <laughs> like, oh, by the way, my nitpick's on episode one. <laughs> but yeah. No, so overall, yeah, I loved it. And then, no, you make really good points with your nitpicks for sure. Those all definitely uh, hold water. Um, for me, tonally speaking, uh, I, I like that Clone Wars tone. As you know, I like original Star Wars tone. I, I you know, I was saying, I just love it all. There's nothing bad ever, yeah. you know, right. not saying that, but, but I like, I like the different tones, you know, I, to me, they're both Star sure. Wars. Um, and to me, like, I, I know I've made this point before, so apologize for repeating myself, but, but, you know, 
to me, the most valuable thing about the Clone Wars is to me, it gives more meaning to what happens in the movies because it just, sure. you know, between episode two and episode three, you don't see anything. And now we've got seven seasons of stories, you know, that happen between episode two and episode three. And it fleshes, it makes, it makes it more meaningful uh, what happens to these characters because now you have more invest, no, more emotional investment in these characters. So now to me, even though Anakin's fall in Revenge of the Sith was already powerful, now it's twice as powerful to me, you know, because this is now the character you just watched for seven seasons. He's not just the character that was saying the crappy lines Lucas gave him in episode two and he falls to the dark side, okay, whatever. Now it's like, oh man, this is Anakin who just fought. <laughs> through seven seasons of Clone Wars, you know, and yeah. he's falling to the dark side. Yeah, and that, it just he's gives so much a, he's a lot more than sand. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, that, that to me is one of the most important things about uh, shows like this. And I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have all my hands in the expanded universe. You know, I don't, I mean, I, I do read some books and I'll, I, I don't really get into the comics too much, although I have recently, to be honest with you, because um, I discovered them on my phone on Kindle. Uh, <laughs> so I'll actually go through the comics that way. Um, but, uh, but yeah, you know, I, I just love this kind of stuff. I think it really just helps just you know, like I said, it expands the universe, hence the, the frame expanded, the, the term expanded universe. You know, I think it's, I think it's great. And, uh, and, and I love the tone uh, for what it is. You know, yeah, it's definitely not classic Star Wars tone in the, in, in the sense of the original three films, uh, but it's still, it's still very much uh, Star Wars. So. Well, there you go. Yeah. There you uh, go. I don't, I don't disagree. Um, we'll see what happens next as far as my nitpicks, whether they get expanded some and, you know, yeah. uh, or whether, or whether what happens kind of resolves some of that stuff for me. But, um, uh, yeah, it, it, it was a great episode. It was a big moment for Ahsoka, uh, at, to yeah. transition between the girl before and the kind of great Jedi or whatever she was that we saw in mm -hmm. Rebels. And, um... Um, that's the main takeaway I have from that, really. Yeah. And it also provides us a direction, some more clues about Rex and his fate. And um, as far as Maul, I'm very confused. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I know I know they couldn't give Maul much of a different motivation because when we see him in Rebels, he's still got the same motivation. He's still got they the can't, vengeance. Yeah. They can't give up on that, you know, in yeah. between. But um, I almost feel like it would have been better if there had been another villain with him or some kind of wrinkle to the situation. Um, yeah. But anyway, uh, we'll see. Uh, I think there's going to be an interesting fight there um, if Maul decides to take her on. Uh, and he might just to try to capture her to use her to draw Kenobi back in or something. But <laughs> yeah, so yeah. we'll see. Um, and also, how can they resist giving us a, a duel between those two? I mean, because you know yeah. that's what everybody's expecting next. Exactly. Uh, and I know nothing about what happens next. I'll be equally looking forward to it. But yeah, um, yeah. so yeah, amazing. we if for all, it's, it's four thumbs up, right? <laughs> all oh, of yeah, our thumbs. four thumbs up. All of our thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> thumbs, technical, yeah. everything. <laughs> Exactly. So yeah. So that's uh, anything else. Uh... <laughs> All right. Uh, well, if you don't have anything else, I don't have anything else. Uh, we can sign off till next week when we tackle episode ten. Uh, just cheers and congrats on a great episode. Let's see some more. Yep. Enjoy the end here. Yay, oh, well. Filoni, you rock. <laughs> <laughs> Ahem. <clears throat>